Hey guys, I'm Chad with Exodus and thank you for clicking on this video. If you've been searching for a place to learn more about trail cameras, more about trail camera strategies, more um, just general knowledge about trail cameras, how they work, all of that stuff, you found the right spot. In this video, we're gonna talk about the six biggest mistakes when running trail cameras in the late season. So for all of you that have been following our content for a while, I'm sure you've heard us talk about batteries uh, for the last six years putting out educational information on power sources has a bit been a big priority because it's so important. Um, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions or uh, I guess ignorance on the, on the topic. And when you're running trail cameras in the late season, specifically with cold weather, your power source becomes your number one priority if you want those cameras to operate correctly. So throughout the year, if you have been running alkaline batteries, uh, this is the time of year you want to change over to lithiums, um, whether that's a you know internal AA lithium cell or if you're using some type of external power uh, product like our SP18, where you have lithium batteries built in to a solar panel uh, to use as an external power source. And with that setup, you can certainly get you know a year runtime out of that, even even on a cell camera. So we've gotten um, you know we've been selling that product for a few years now, and there's a numerous number of those out of the market and a lot of guys are getting more than a season out of them but going back to alkalines versus lithiums alkalines are using a water-based electrode and when you get down below sub 30 degrees obviously water freezes at 32 degrees when you get in these cold temperatures the, the resistance inside those alkaline batteries are start to, they're going to start changing and become affected by that cold weather so you're going to get inconsistent voltage output and then there's also potential there for that battery to freeze and leak causing damage to your cameras so this is why we recommend lithium batteries typically all year, but specifically in the late cold weather season um, when these temperatures are dropping because lithiums use a metallic based electrode unaffected by cold weather temperatures down to minus 30 degrees where they're giving you constant voltage output and there's no potential there for them to leak and freeze. So number one mistake for guys running uh, trail cameras in the late season is using the wrong type of power source. So jumping down to number two, the second biggest mistake we see is guys not shuffling their cameras around and prioritizing food locations. For most of us, you know, if you still have a tag in your pocket, you've hunted October or maybe even September, you've hunted the rut in November, maybe you've hunted the gun season and it's getting to the point where we're all worn down we're all mentally drained and it's very, very easy to become complacent and lazy and just say, well, hey, if a, if a good buck shows up, you know, uh, I'll make a move on them. But in the late season, you know, there's always guys talking about hunting mature deer in the cold weather when you have available food sources. And a lot of guys prefer to hunt deer um, or mature deer in the late season because they're a little more um, patternable and you can kind of watch these weather fronts and make more educated or predicted decisions based on the weather and previous data points. But the second uh, number, the second biggest mistake we see people make is not getting to this point in the season, still have a tag in your pocket and not shuffling those cameras around to those food locations. They're stuck, um, you know, you may have cameras stuck in rut locations, uh, maybe there's a travel corridor or a pinch point, maybe you're on doe bedding still, maybe you're on scrapes, uh, whatever that case may be. Don't get complacent in the late season you know, time is critical. There's only a few weeks uh, left here in Ohio for our season. It's probably that, that way across the Midwest. If you still have your tag in your pocket, there's still time to be strategic with your camera locations, get these things shuffled around to these food sources to allow you to kind of, it does a couple of things. It allows you to gather inventory on your survivor bucks. And if you still have a tag in your pocket, it's going to allow you to get I guess more information on where and when you can go ahead and plan to make a move on that specific deer and maybe get them killed. So moving on to our next mistake, checking your trail cameras too often. And there's a couple different ways to look at this. You can look at it from a perspective where you still have a tag in your pocket and still trying to hunt and capitalize on any late season uh, hunting. So again, you know, throughout the year, our recommendations for checking cameras kind of change. Going back to the rut where it's a little less critical to be worried about, um, you know, the frequency you're checking your cameras. Actually, we recommend checking them as often as needed throughout the rut because, you know, the bucks are out of their mind, you know, running around doing whatever. And they're a lot less um, susceptible to human intrusion or human pressure. But after these deer have been bumped around all season, they've been hunted with a bow, they've been 
you know, hunted with a gun, party hunting, guys putting on drives. They've been bumped around and been pressured. So, you know, not pressuring your camera locations if they're in close proximity to where you're hunting is ultra important. Um, if you plan to, you know, do any late season hunting and try to capitalize on these late season patterns. And the other reason you want to be careful of, of how often you're checking your cameras is, let's say you already have your buck tag filled, but you're still collecting inventory data. Um, it's ultra important not to check those cameras too often, especially on these food sources, because if you want to be able to go in and shed hunt and, you know, have a good shed hunting season, you don't want to be adding pressure to your property and bumping those deer over to your neighbors or over to a secondary or another food source where you may not have the ability to actually pick up those sheds when they, when they fall off. So number three, the third biggest mistake we see people make is checking their cameras too often. The next talking point we want to get to is pulling your cameras too early. You know, at this point in the season, whether you have a tag in your pocket or not, a lot of guys are just, you know, they've used their vacation. They think, you know, the season for them is done. There's nothing left for them to do. And they're kind of packing it in uh, for the year. And this time of year is really what's going to set you up for the following years as far as data collection and data points on these survivor bucks. You know, we've talked about in the past with two and three year old bucks, a lot of guys will get so fixated on their target deer, target animals, you know, if they're hunting mature deer, four, five, six year old deer, that a lot of times the two and three year old photos and videos that you're getting from your trail cameras are kind of getting forgotten about or they're less prioritized. But the two and three year old data point, the data points you're getting on two and three year old deer are gonna set you up for the next season. Those three year olds are gonna be four year olds. The two, two year olds, you know, in two years they'll be four. And the more data you can collect on these younger bucks, the more information you're gonna have in 2021, 2022, 2023 to hunt these deer on their terms um, as they become mature, as they kind of fill the parameters of your, of your target. So the fourth biggest mistake we see people make is checking or pulling their cameras too early. So the fifth mistake we see people make is not categorizing or not saving the information from late season card pulls. Uh, this is the time of year again where, you know, you're trying to inventory not only your survivor bucks, but maybe you want to inventory your entire deer herd. Um, does have been getting slaughtered all through the year and a lot of guys will, will save this time of year to actually measure how many does they have available on their property or in their kind of deer herd that are huntable. Because, you know, you hear a lot of guys complain about not seeing any deer, but then they'll go out and fill every doe tag that they have. And that's not doing you or your property any favors for the following, for the following year. So, um, you know, saving this information and these data points, not only on survivor bucks and the two and three year old deer for upcoming hunting seasons, but also doing the same thing with your doe inventory, knowing, uh, you know, which does are still around, which mature, mature does are still around, how many fawns or yearlings um, are on your property and kind of get a measure of, you know, how many does have been bred can also give you a decent gauge of the rutting activity on your specific property. And one added point with not saving information, I just mentioned, you know, the number of fawns on your property or yearlings. This is something that we've seen kind of throughout the past couple of years when we've started to pay more attention to uh, late season trail camera information is, you know, the late December, early January, we have seen yearlings come in to eat and, you know, kind of a secondary 48, 72 hour rut frenzy or buck frenzy around those yearling does coming into estrus. So uh, typically that happens when those, those, those fawns or yearlings are coming, you know, 90 to 80 to 90 pounds roughly uh, before they become sexually mature enough to come into estrus. And we've seen that this time of the year, beginning of January, or late season is the time when that happens. So be sure that you're paying attention um, to that data when you're also collecting and storing everything for the following season. And the last thing, the sixth biggest mistake that we see people make, and this happens often, uh, it's more seen on Facebook or when customers call in. Um, it's not necessarily something that you know is floating around on YouTube, but there's a lot of guys that are not storing their cameras properly. And we have a lot of information on you know truck camera maintenance, and proper storage techniques that you can follow to kind of extend the longevity of your cameras, whether you're running our brand Exodus cameras, or if it's Browning or Reconyx or whoever, um, there's some specific things there you need to really look for. And 
uh, if, if you are one of those guys that have pulled your cameras out and you kind of brought them back and you're, and you're kind of going over them, the couple things before you store them, you want to make sure, take the time now that your cameras are up to date with firmware and just take a couple minutes on each camera, kind of look them over, clean the dust and dirt off of them, pull the batteries out of your cameras. You never want to store your batteries in your cameras for the, for, uh, the off season. So you're pulling those batteries out of the camera, checking your battery trays, pulling your SD cards out. And then you're getting some type of um, some type of box. Maybe it's a Rubbermaid container or some type of tote. You're putting those cameras in that tote. And then we recommend just throwing a couple of silica packs into that container. And if there's any condensation or moisture uh, kind of left in those cameras, those silica packs will absorb that moisture and uh, help extend the longevity of your camera. So those are the six biggest mistakes that we see people make when they're running trail cameras in the late season. We hope um, you know these six talking points provided some value to you, and maybe you learned uh, a thing or two. If they have provided value and you're a new to our channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us some feedback in that comment section below. We appreciate everybody watching.